All right, so kennel cough, um, it's going around a lot lately. Like uh, it's, it's um, I've heard it from a lot of different people that there's, there's outbreaks of kennel cough in, in lots of different areas. And uh, I was even talking to Stephanie and, and my marketing team today, and they have it a lot in Ontario and we have it quite a bit out here. And so it's something that you want to, you want to pay attention to. It's highly contagious um, and it's incredibly uncomfortable for our dogs. It has to be diagnosed by your vet. So the reason I say that is other things can mimic kennel cough, like you know, pneumonia or aspirated ammonia, or, you know, if something happens and your dog has um, some kind of acid reflux or have some kinds of vomiting issue and they somehow, they somehow um, aspirate a little bit, it can also, dogs can cough quite badly with um, uh, heart disease. They can get laryngeal paralysis. There's lots of different, different things that can mimic it a little bit. So definitely make sure that you get it diagnosed. But first, first times of any coughing. So if your dog all of a sudden just starts to cough and until you can get them to the vets, I would do Arnica 200C or, or 1M and Aconite 200C or 1M to try to reduce its severity. That's not what you're going to do to help support it. You're going to try to derail it from getting worse or the severity of it getting worse before you go and see or as the same day or until you can get in to see your vet. Once the diagnosis has been made, um, this is another combination. You can combine two pellets of phosphorus, 200, drosaria, 200, spongia, 200, ipecac, 200, and arnica, 200. It sounds like a lot, but kennel cough is something you want to get on top of so that it doesn't uh, linger and, you know, your animal, your dog gets sicker and sicker. And the same thing, you put it in a cup of water, wait 20 minutes, blah, blah, blah. So if your dog is put on antibiotics, another thing is consider adding a high quality probiotics to their routine. And there's nothing, if you go to the vets and the vet says, yes, he's got um, kennel cough and he's, you, you can't convince them not to put them on antibiotics or let's say it's been a bit of time before you got them in and they can hear something in their chest like a secondary infection in their chest and they they wind up going on antibiotics don't stop that um uh that combination you can still continue doing that combination with antibiotics Remedies are not contraindicated when it comes to drugs. They're very safe, unlike some herbs and things like that. You have to be really careful of homeopathic remedies. You don't. And what this will do is it'll it, it'll speed up, help to speed up their process of healing. Um, the next thing that's important with kennel cough is supportive home care. It's really really important. Um, I always say to people, kind of with everything put your dogs in put yourself in your dog's shoe or your cat's shoes or your horse's shoes and imagine yourself in this case with bronchitis or some kind of wicked cough where you know you, you're coughing so hard that you can't get your breath and your throat feels like it's closing try to just if, if you if you think like that your home care is is vital like you can do all the homeopathic remedies in the world you can you can um, do drugs or whatever. But when your animal's at home, it's really important to pay attention to how would you support them if they were, if it was you or your child or your, your, you know, aged mother or your partner, it doesn't really matter. So anything that they shouldn't be eating anything that is dry. So no kibble, no dry treats, no bones, nothing sharp. Um, everything should be soft. Another, a good thing, a little addition that's nice is it, if you give them warm bone broth and you mix a really good quality Manuka honey in it, make sure it's melted. Don't just give your dog a spoonful of Manuka honey when they've got kennel cough. And the reason is, is because a lot of dogs, when they get kennel cough, they get uh, mucus. Some of them it's really dry, but the, there is, there's still mucus on the back of their throats. And if you 
mix mucus and um, sounds lovely, mucus and honey together. That's really hard to swallow and sometimes they can start to choke. So you wanna just make sure that the, all the honey that you're using is mixed and, and um, in a nice bone broth and that really helps them. Raise, put them on a raised, uh, um, like raise their bowls, put them on a raised platter or raised uh, whatever, a little table. And rather than giving them a bowl, you should give them a plate. And the reason I always love giving animals plates anyways, I never ever, other than their water, I don't give, I don't feed anything in a bowl. So again, just imagine if you can't breathe and when you bend down and you're putting your face in a bowl and there's not much air, it's just so much easier on them to go in a plate than a bowl and raised. Um, you want to keep their immune system really boost in this, boosted in this case. Sometimes you hear me talking about don't boost their immune system if it's autoimmune. But in this case, it's not autoimmune. It's a virus. And you want to make sure that their immune system is as strong as possible. You can use things like phytoplankton, homeopathic echinacea, probiotics, and medicinal mushrooms are, are very supportive as well. Keep their exercise to a minimum. And I mean a minimum. Um, outside to go pee and poo, and then back in the house. And whatever you do, don't restrain them with a collar. Because the minute you put one of the one of the ways that will diagnose kennel cough is they'll squeeze their trachea and see if they start to cough or if they've got a collapsing trachea, they can do that too. But they have very sensitive tracheas when they're when they have kennel cough. And um, any kind of collar, any kind of restraint on their throat will get them coughing again. So what you're trying to do is reduce the amount of coughing that they get because when they're coughing, they're constantly, that's, they're, they're getting it chronically inflamed and it just takes longer and longer and then they get more um, mucus and the list goes on and on. The next thing is make sure that there's good airflow. So, um, you know, make sure that they're warm, but don't get them too hot. Because what you won't, don't want to happen again is you don't want them panting. So if they're sitting there and they're going <laughs> like that, they're they're breathing in air. If they're breathing in air rapidly, and that's going to start them to cough. And for anybody that's ever heard a dog with kennel cough, it is horrific, and they cough and cough and cough. They have spasmodic coughs where it goes on and on and on. And sometimes they'll retch after. And that's why we use the remedies that we do because they're specifically for spasmodic coughs and, and that end with retching and things like that. 